Hello everyone. In the later video, we will write an API solution for seamless IK FK blending using callbacks. Before we start writing our solution, we would understand what is our problem and what we are trying to achieve. So here we have a three joint chain to which an IK handle is attached. When we are in IK mode, we can drive the end joint and it would move its parent joints. And when we grab this middle joint of the chain, we can rotate it. In the same way, we can also rotate first joint of the chain. But now, now we would apply a pull constraint to our IK handle. So our, the direction of our middle joint of the chain will be directed by the pole control. But as soon as we apply this pole vector, we are not allowed to rotate this joint and this joint because we are in IK mode and we have the pole vector applied to it. So that is the problem. For resolving this problem, we will create a very basic setup using which we will be able to combine the functionality of IK and FK using the callback. Before we understand the functionality, we will understand what is IK and FK. Kinematics. IK is inverse kinematics and FK is forward kinematics. What is kinematics? Kinematics is the study of how things move. So first we would talk about forward kinematics. Forward kinematics is a motion in which the parent joint in the hierarchy drives the child joint. So in this FK setup, using joint two, I can drive joint three. And using joint one, I can drive both joint two and joint three. So in this way, I'm driving child joints using parent joint. And in IK setup, in inverse kinematics, I'm driving parent joint using the child joint or the end joint. And combining the functionality of both means that we should be able to drive the joint one and joint two using the end joint as well as we should be able to drive end joint using joint two and joint one seamlessly with, without making any changes and our pole vector or pole constraint remain effective however there would be some internal changes but they would be unvisible to the user so that's what we are willing to do using the callbacks so how we are going to resolve it or how we are going to create a solution for seamless ik fk blending for example if we have a three joint chain and we have an ik attached to it and we have a pole vector attached to an IK handle. We know that there is an attribute which is IK blend and as soon as we set it as zero it turns off the IK solver and now we are able to rotate these joints but if I would turn on the IK blend back we would see a snapping of the joint because of the pole vector. So with this, we will also have to take care of this pole vector so that it's, it's completely seamless. It should not be visible to the user when they are working with IK or when they are working with FK. But one thing to remember, if we use this technique 
our setup will be a lot similar to what we have in Motion Builder, where we always key joints. We can use the functionality of IK, but we will always be keying the joint positions and the rotation. So now we know that for the seamless IKFK blending, we will have to do two things. One, we would have to switch between IK and FK. Second, we would have to snap this pole vector control to wherever our joint two of the chain goes. Now, let's take a look at the hypergraph of this scene setup. So we have our three joints. We have the IK handle, we have the pole vector constraint and the curve that is controlling the pole vector. So the idea is whenever we select either the IK handle or this pole vector, we should stay in the IK mode. And whenever we select joint two or joint one or any other joint in the skeleton, we should stay in the FK mode. To achieve that, we would write a callback and the callback would be based on the change of selection. So whenever there would be a change of selection, our function would detect oh, what is being selected, what am I supposed to do? And then we would embed that callback in a custom node and we would keep it in the scene. So whenever the scene is reopened or opened again later in the future, our functionality stays in the scene. So first we would create an event callback. We should keep a track on change of selection. And then we would embed that inside a custom node. Technically saying, when we would create a custom node, inside that custom node, we would create those callbacks. So, which is theoretically, we will embed the callback inside the custom node. But event callbacks are not the scene-based events. This callback would stick until you restart your Maya or your Maya session remains active. And if we would just create an event callback and we create a new scene in which we have not created this custom node, our functionality would still be active. Our callback would still execute the function. And to prevent this kind of malfunction, which is kind of a defect, we would create another callback We will create another kind of callback which will be dependency graph callback which would track the addition or creation and deletion. So as soon as we create a new scene or we delete this custom node, both our callbacks will be removed and we will write the remove function for that. And this setup would work on all the three chain IKs in your scene. You will not have to create every single custom node for every single three joint IK chain setup. You would just create one custom node in the scene and it should work on any number of IK setup you have.